Path of Exile's 3.25 expansion, Settlers of Cowgirls, I mean Colgur, has been out for a few weeks. After having played about 80 hours in the past two weeks and definitely not being addicted, I wanted to give you guys an update. Starting off with the League and King's March. I poured lots of gold into upgrading my stations first before seeing it disappear into the void, which are my many workers. For the first few days, it was really nice seeing my town slowly come together. Afterwards, the excitement comes from, of course, loot. Over the past few days, my mappers and shipments regularly came back with some divines. I think the best I got so far were three divines from a shipment with around 5 to 10 million shipment value to the Kolgur. If I wanted more currency, maybe I just have to get lucky like this guy. God, I wish that were me. <laughs> to briefly mention gold and the wage per hour in King's March, it is pretty rough for the average tier 16 mapper, which I am. If you are running tier 17s though, you are probably swimming in gold, but not everyone can do those maps. Beside that, there is a bit of FOMO when it comes to gold, which I can sympathize with, so I hope GGG can add a lot more gold in different ways. Here are a few examples. Drop huge stacks after a Legion 5 wave. Every fifth simulacrum wave drops lots of gold over the entire arena. Add a unique relic to the sanctum that makes the chest at the end drop a lot more gold. Add a scarab that boosts gold drops from unique enemies or maybe only the map boss. By the way, this could also be a keystone next league. Please? Blight bosses have an affinity to drop more gold. And lastly, Ritual offers huge stacks of gold in the UI. I could keep going, but I think you get the gist. Until we get more sources for gold, I had to reduce my gold cost per hour in King's Marsh. So I started removing workers. I went from around 60k to around 50k gold upkeep per hour when everything is running. Still very high, but... I think manageable to a degree. Gold is only one part of the loot though, the other part is everything else. Let's talk about currency strats and ground loot. I ran a budget strongbox strat in T16 Toxic Sewer at the start and made good currency according to Wealthy Exile. But as the prices for the ambush scarab kept rising and I got slowly burned out from that strategy, I just ran my maps without additional content. That was the point, I thought ground loot is bugged or just weird. But again, Wealthy Exile showed me I was making okay currency. Nothing crazy, but I got consistent loot, probably thanks to Searing Exarch. And this reminded me of what I learned a few years ago. Cicerin mentioned that each monster is like a one-armed bandit, like the ones in the casinos. Nowadays, I might say each monster is like a gacha pull. Every monster has a chance to drop big loot. The more monsters you kill, the better. To kill lots of mobs, you need the damage, but you also need to move from monster pack to monster pack, so movement speed is very important too. As a degenerate lightning arrow deadeye, once again this league, I can run my Alcan Gold E16 Toxic Sewer maps in about a minute and a half. That's around 1400 monsters each map and I didn't roll my maps for pack size. Because I'm bad. For people with slower builds that kill less mobs in the same time, loot might feel worse. You are probably tankier though, so you might actually do some content that I wouldn't do, like Blight, Harbinger, Essence and Ritual. I didn't try them out, because I'm not a fan of those, nor can my 3.4k Deadeye survive that. If you are interested in what I did with my Zuma build, I will leave my Atlas skill tree in the description. To make mapping feel better, the only thing I can recommend is actually getting better boots with lots of movement speed, maybe you can throw in a death rush or get a really good quicksilver flask. In the end, keep in mind that the vines per hour don't matter if you don't have fun. Fun per hour matters more, that's why I don't pick up anything in my maps and just run through 
until I hear the tink sound. Beside the insane gold upkeep and weird tier 16 and tier 17 juicing strats, do I recommend this league? Yes, of course. Settlers of Kolgur is probably one of the best leagues we had for quite a while, because mappers and shipments in King's March give you passive income, melee is back stronger than ever, and T17s are actually somewhat doable. And then there is the amazing currency exchange market that I have been using a lot. Please, GGG, never take it away from me. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, subscribe. And don't forget to stay hydrated, gamers.